Principal funding for Rights and Wrongs has been provided by the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, Open Society Institute, and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Global Vision presents Rights and Wrongs, Human Rights Television. I'm Charlene hunter Gault, and you're watching Rights and Wrongs. Our focus this week, human rights and children. Every child deserves a healthy start, a head start, a fair start, a safe start that they're not killed by guns as they walk to school or as they sit on their own porches, and they have a moral start in life, that they have parents and families and communities that reflect the kind of values that glue us together as a people. You are watching Rights and Wrongs, Human Rights Television. Many people believe that most poor children in America are black and live in cities. In fact, most live in suburbs and rural areas, and 60% are white. Charles Vance was one of them. Vance grew up near Whitesburg, Kentucky, in the heart of Appalachia, one of the most economically depressed parts of the United States. A one-time skinhead, Charles Vance changed his life with the help of a federally funded nonprofit organization. Hard times are as common as coal in Appalachia where the economy centers around mining, and where the struggle for human rights centers around economic justice. Through decades of poverty and labor confrontations, the people here have had one consistent source of strength, their culture. What's gotten people through tough times, the lessons that they learned seem to be cultural. It has to do with the stories you tell, it has to do with the music you listen to, it has to do with the way you relate to your neighbor. Well, D. If, Davis directs Apple Shop, if, a nonprofit, community-run media center located in Whitesburg, Kentucky. Apple Shop's resources include a video production facility. Deep in tradition, right here on WMMT a volunteer radio station, and a recording studio. So, let's see how you get back to it. How you In addition, Apple Shop houses Whitesburg's only theater. It's on this stage that Charles Vance found a refuge. We don't want to get busted. Them other shiners up there might catch. What do you think about the situation? Without drama, I'd say I'd have been dead a long time ago, really, because it's kept me out of a lot of trouble. It showed another side of me, a caring side that I really do care about things. When he was 14, Charles Vance shaved his head, joined a hate group, and began to pick fights. At 16, he stabbed a classmate. I wanted to be hate incarnate. That's what I wanted. I wanted to be just the meanest thing to ever walk. And people would ask me questions like, why do you hate these people? Why do you hate me for? And I couldn't tell them. I couldn't explain why. All I could do was say, well, I, I just hate you. His father abandoned the family when Charles was six years old, leaving his mother to raise three boys on her own. I made ends meet for Charles and my other two sons by state assistance, welfare. I was too young to remember it, and I really didn't know what a father was. It was hard economic economically with three children trying to make ends meet all the time. It was hard. Charles grew up in Letcher County, Kentucky, one of the poorest counties in the United States. One third of the population here lives below the federal poverty line. Thirty percent of students never finish high school. I almost dropped out 15 million times. I was like, well, I don't care about school, you know, forget it, I'm quitting. You know, I don't like school, I can't stand the teachers, they're just against me. 
I was never did do my work, so I got put in special classes because they thought I had a learning disability. And what it was, I was just too lazy to do my work. I was, didn't want to do it. So one day in my English class, they wanted us to write a play. Stills? What do you mean, Stills? Why oh, hell no, we don't know. No and man. I said, well, I guess I could put a little effort in this. And me and this one boy wrote a great play. For us, it was great. So let's imagine that you're over here behind the chair. The play caught the attention the of Jeff Hawkins, the, of the, the high school drama you teacher. You guys are just going to be standing here. Well, howdy. He was out there. He was looking for a direction that he wanted to take. And I wanted to provide whatever assistance I could to help him realize what his direction was. And get that look in your eye. Hawk, he just, he just reached his hand out to me and I took it. He was the first person to show me that kindness and I liked it. What we try to do through programs here at Apple Shop and in the school is remind kids that they are connected to a place and that this place is a very good place and that it's made some good people and that they should be proud of their heritage and proud of their culture. Apple Shop's mission is to give the people of Appalachia a chance to tell their own stories in their own words. And that's the dust was in the minds at that time. You know, it was critical. I wouldn't have a third of its $1.8 million dollar annual budget comes from government grants. Funders include the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which gives grants to many media projects, including rights and wrongs. Theoretically, uh, private interests could come in and uh, do a lot, but the reality is that you don't see it very much. I know that if it hadn't been for the National Endowment for the Arts or the National Endowment for the Humanities, there weren't very many corporate uh, interests or philanthropic uh, interests who wanted to uh, deal with certain issues that had to do with Appalachia. My family was a uh kind of into the whiskey thing during the time they sold a lot of it. You talk to my grandfather, he used to run Sean. Is that right? Yeah, he ran the We try to connect kids with who they are and where they are because culture is important. It's a part of us. It's what makes us who we are and helps to make us what we'll become at some point. And if you lose the connection with your past, then it's really hard to exist in the present and it's that much harder to know where you're going into the future. For Charles, the immediate future includes a scholarship to study theater at the State University in Moorhead, Kentucky. A lot of things has changed in my life. I mean, I got a scholarship to go somewhere. I'm going to do good in my life. I mean, it's just great because I have a feeling that I'm changing. This kind of program is invaluable because it does make those kids realize what's out there and be empowered with their own abilities and invested with the idea that they're smart and that they can do something.